are the blue orbs of Skinwalker Ranch technological? This is fascinating to me because I have a ghost hunting background uh, and you know the, the orbs that I'm accustomed to dealing with are more of a spiritual or paranormal nature. Um, but there is new evidence that has come to me from the book of uh, the uh, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon uh, that maybe the orbs, especially the blue orbs at Skinwalker Ranch uh, in other places might have a technological basis. So uh, get in here. This is Cosmic Road where I discuss UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. And uh, follow me on social media. There's links below, Facebook and Twitter. Be super helpful if you could share these videos as they drop on social media. So be sure to follow me there. And uh, please comment below as I'm going through this story. Okay, I'm just going to read one paragraph from the book, or maybe one or two paragraphs from the book, uh, The Skinwalkers at the Pentagon by George Knapp and Company. Uh, the first incident, and this is talking about the Shermans, uh, the people that owned the ranch before Bob Bigelow and who sold it to Bob Bigelow, and they had a, a series of disturbing incidents over a few years uh, that ultimately led them to sell the ranch. And one of one or two of those incidents that I'm going to talk about now involve the blue orbs. And you will see why uh, it disturbed them so. Uh, the first incident I'm reading uh, happened a few months before the rancher sold the property to Robert Bigelow. So traumatic was this incident that it was instrumental in the family's decision to sell the property and ultimately move to a different state. During one evening in May of 1996, as Gorman, and um, uh, George Knapp always calls them the Gormans because he had to deal with them, that he wouldn't reveal their true identities. But we all know now that they are the Shermans, just like Axelrod is almost certainly Jay Stratton. During one evening in May of 1996, as Gorman was outside with his dogs, he noticed a baseball-sized blue orb maneuvering close to the ground in the large field beside his homestead. He sent his three dogs after it. One of the dogs got so close to the blue orb, leaping and snapping at it, but the blue orb dodged just out of reach. It appeared to be under intelligent control. The blue orb, still flying close to the ground, disappeared into an area with a lot of undergrowth and trees with the three dogs in hot pursuit. Shortly afterwards, the rancher heard a series of high-pitched yelps and then silence. The following morning, he went down to the area and discovered three round areas of very dried-out vegetation with three black greasy lumps in the middle of each circle. The rancher presumed that his three dogs had been incinerated. The dogs were never seen again. So the blue orbs incinerated um, these poor dogs that were, you know, chasing it. Um, not the first occasion that we've seen pets uh, be killed by a blue orb. Uh, Jim Simivan relates a story where um, somebody, possibly Jay Stratton, I forget who, um, you know, when he came home, they started seeing blue orbs, uh, you know, as, as a hitchhiker effect. And one of their cats was trying to play with it or interact with it and touched it. And it developed terminal cancer. Uh, so, you know, uh, that, that seemed to be an unintentional death. But this is clearly an intentional death. Uh, at least I think so. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you think the blue orbs intentionally killed these dogs. But to me, I think, yes. Uh, moving on, the second incident on the ranch was much closer and more personal. The Gormans were enjoying a beautiful sunset just outside their homestead on a summer evening in 96 when they noticed a blue orb circling a horse's head in the field less than 100 yards away. The horse was impatiently flicking its head away from the orb as it circled within a few inches of its head. Suddenly, the orb flew directly towards the rancher and his wife, then halted about 10 feet above and in front of them. As the blue orb hovered above them, they got a very clear view of it. 
In interviews, both remember that the orb was a glass-like object about the size of a baseball with two different bubbling blue liquids mixing and rotating inside. I'll repeat that. A glass-like object about the size of a baseball with two different bubbling blue liquids mixing and rotating inside. I mean, to me, that sounds very technological. That does not sound spiritual or metaphysical. I mean, it could be, you know, involving metaphysical properties and, you know, other dimensional properties, possibly coming from somewhere else or utilizing energies from somewhere else or physics from somewhere else. Um, and so you may even think of it as a higher dimensional technology. I, I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea, but that's fascinating. Uh, moving on, the object appeared to emit a sound like the faint crackling of static electricity. As they watched, fascinated, their apprehension slowly escalated into fear. Uh, neither said a word to the other. Their fear quickly became unbearable. They were now drenched in sweat. Almost automatically, in a desperate bid for survival, the ranger's wife snapped on the flashlight and in, in a lightning reaction, the blue orb darted off into a nearby tree, maneuvering away at high speed to avoid the stabbing beam of the flashlight. Why would a, an orb, a uh, highly technological device, if that's what it is, um, under obviously intelligent control, why would that retreat from a light? The only thing that I can think of uh, is the intent and the will behind it. Uh, there have been many cases when people were being abducted by the beings, uh, the greys and mainly, that uh, invoked the name of God or Jesus uh, to ward off the abductions. And many times that works. And there are many times where, where people have been out of body, having out of body experiences, and also invoke the name of God or Jesus and that has actually worked to repel dark forces. So I think in stabbing this light at this thing, uh, she was focusing her will on it and her intent for it to go away. And, you know, I, to me, that is what makes sense. I don't think that the blue orbs are scared by light. Um, but I could be wrong. Well, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Uh, yeah, so the uh, blue orb moved, moved off uh, through the branches with su superbly tight, sophisticated maneuvers. Both rangers were convinced that the object was under intelligent control. Uh, yeah, so when the with the orb now a distance away, this is the other interesting thing, the Gormans felt their terror begin to diminish. Their heart rates began to slow and the pumping flow of adrenaline began to subside. Uh, within 20 minutes, uh, they were both back to normal, but the memory of that intense fear would remain with them for a long time. Uh, both were adamant that there really was no rational reason for the level of visceral terror that they had experienced. The couple later speculated that the blue orbs were technological devices that were capable of manipulating the level of fear in the human body. I just find that extremely fascinating and maybe even important. Uh, this, you know, evoking fear is, uh, that's not the first time I've, I've heard that uh, in encounters with uh, beings of, you know, different kinds. Um, you know, there's one experience or account that I listened to a year or two ago. She was an abductee who was really uh, put through the ringer by the beings. Uh, they, um, they, they hooked into her, her emotions and manipulated her emotions to where she, uh, felt, uh, extreme terror and hate and anger. Uh, and then they brought her back to joy and happiness and then back to terror and fear, um, again and again. And she would keep on having heart attacks and they would keep on reviving her. But it seemed like they were testing, possibly, this is just speculation, but possibly testing her emotions and the limits of her emotions. 
And uh, there, there are multiple cases that where they seem to be affecting emotions, uh, particularly fear. And, uh, you know, I talked a little bit yesterday about an, a possible reason why people see the giant wolf <coughs> at Skinwalker Ranch and the werewolf creature that's associated with Skinwalker Ranch. Um, and that may be to evoke fear or, or to distract people uh, while some sort of abduction experience is taking place. Uh, but it could also be simply to stimulate fear. I have seen that in ghost hunting where it seems like entities will target people or even pets and kind of torment them. And it seems like the goal is to evoke fear as if they feed on the fear. You know, that's just speculation. We don't know. Uh, but that something like that seems to be going on, at least with some spiritual entities. Uh, you know, I have no idea what's going on with the Skinwalker Ranch orbs and whatever intelligence is controlling them. Um, but I think that's fascinating and possibly important because it may be telling and maybe telling us something about them. Uh, but what that is, I don't know, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I think this is a super fascinating subject that not too many people talk about, um, but I think it is possibly significant. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this craziness. Please smash that subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. And there are social media links below. If you would follow me on Facebook and Twitter, that'd be awesome. And uh, please share these videos as they drop on social media. Until next time, Cosmic Road out.